All right, guys, so here's a near no edit capture on the first reboot uh, or actual first boot in to the upgrade I just did. I just upgraded to an R7 3700X and some of the voltages are just insane. Uh, 3700X, I was on a 3600 uh, before, R5 3600, which is a six core 12 thread. This 3700X is an eight core 16 thread and I'm not using this Wraith uh, cooler that comes with it. Um, it's got a max frequency of 4.4 gigahertz, which is pretty cool. So I'm actually seeing the 4.4 gigahertz, but we'll see what else uh, we can do with this guy. Just some first impressions of the 3700X. I, I did a transplant from an old Leanne Lee all aluminum case to this uh, 205M version which is a much better case for water cooling and some of the newer things you want to do, but it is um, quite a bit heavier than the all aluminum version, which uh, Leanne Lee used to be very well known for. Uh, this one's made with stamped steel which makes and glass, which makes this thing very heavy. But it's a cool little case to build in. Um, not going to lie, I like building it in this case. The, steel, the stamped steel, though, doesn't feel quite as good as the aluminum stuff felt. Uh, I want an O11, the new O11 Mini that's going to come out. I want that for another build, but I'm a little bit hesitant with all the steel that's being used in the thing. Um, so we're cooling the 3700X with an old school water 3.0 Extreme and uh, really because I'm designing some parts. Like I've got a VRM cooler that works with this Asetek type um, cooler or AIO. And uh, the motherboard we're using is the B450 Aorus M. I've got a B550 um, and my other setup that I'm testing, trying to get the 3600 clocked up higher. But um, and it is. It's got better VRMs, but it's the cheapest B550 you can get on the market. And even with the cheapest B550, I'm getting better performance than the B450, uh, which is not a mid-range, but it's an okay kind of uh, budget board for that. So let's transition on to what the numbers are showing. If we look at CPU-Z, it's the Matisse R7-3700X, max TDP 65 watt. Eh, I guess that's relative to what um, AMD qualifies as TDP based on the cooler that they provide. Uh, 7 nanometer. Good luck, Intel. Let's see if you're there yet. And uh, I, I've always loved Intel, so I'm, I'm not an AMD fanboy. I'm just saying competition's good. But what's trippy, 1.44 volts sitting here at idle. Uh, yeah, the freak's moving around everywhere, but... It's crazy. 1.452 volts. Is that normal? I, I don't even know. Let's look at HW Info. Here's CPU using Task Manager. Eight cores, 16 logical processors. It's a beautiful thing. Um, let's see what we got here. Max voltage 1.5 volts. Is that insane? I mean, absolutely insane. This is bone stock, by the way. I haven't seen on the 3600, 1.4 volts was the max I saw. Um, so I think, I don't know, this is insane. I You can't use this on a manual overclock. Don't even try. But we're hitting 1.45 volts consistently here on single core performance. Uh, we're going to stress this thing just to see what it does here uh, shortly. So let's use CPU-Z's benching. Is actually a fairly good measurement of uh, how things work. So I'm, I'm going to use the stress portion of CPU-Z. Um, and if you look, when it's stressed under CPU-Z, we're seeing 4.1 gigahertz, all core. Not bad. At 1.3 volts. So uh, that's what it's doing when the amps are fully drawn. It's not doing 1.5 volts all core. Uh, that'd be an insane amount of amps. I think the limit that we would be hitting in that scenario would be the amps, right? So let's look here. What's our temperature being reported by the CPU? T die. T die is maxing out at uh, 73C, 74C. Idle is at 36C. It's pretty good. I think I got a decent pull from the silicon lottery here 
we'll see. I got to uh, clock up to see what we're doing here uh, in, in these terms. Let's see what the gigabytes reporting for temps. CPU 73, relatively accurate. It's on the same uh, wavelength here that it's reporting as the um, as a CPU. Uh, the VRM MOS temps are being reported here. So when we do our little VRM cooler upgrade, we'll see what the VRM temps are like. 54C for VRM temps under all core full load here. So not bad. Um, here's some more data out of uh, Gigabyte here. Some more temperatures. TFIN. Let's see where TFIN is here. V core is reporting at 1.3. That's about right. Um, CPU utilization is at 100%. So this thing's stressing it pretty good. Let's take a look. We're at 100% of the 88 watt PPT. Uh, that This is all at stock. This isn't even with PBO turned on. Peak speed of 4084 all core. That's not bad. I think that's mainly because of uh, how good the cooling is that we have. If I was using the stock cooler, it probably wouldn't be getting at this frequency. It'd probably be at 3.8 all core. Uh, it's what we would see. But it is hitting 75C or 20 degrees C delta to um, to thermal throttling here. 69 watts is what it's saying is the CPU power right now. This is a 65 watt TDP. So that's based on its own little calculation. 100% of 90 amps of EDC right here and 88%. So we're we're hammering this thing at stock with good cooling. And even with good cooling, relatively good cooling, we're at 75 degrees Celsius. I'll, I'll tell you right now, though, I've um, since the transplant into this case, there's not been any fine tuning at all of the fans. So I've got to go into uh, some fan tuning here and fix it. But um, I just want you guys to look at what the frequency is here, okay? Just as a reference, 4078, 4400 is uh, what the single core max frequency is. We're seeing, you know, close to 4.1 gigahertz at 1.34 volt using CPU-Z's um, stress testing, built-in stress testing program. I'm going to run Cinebench 20 here now real soon, and before anyone goes uh screaming at me about how you know having multiple telemetry on means that you know you're pulling data all the time and you're hammering the cpu yeah yeah, yeah. we all we know all that so this is for entertainment purposes so if we kill that right now and we run cinebench r20 the number is going to suck on r20 that's not even um, a foregone conclusion because if you look here OBS is um, using a certain amount of processor, 3.7% processors, what OBS is using. So um, that's why. Now let's see here. While it runs Cinebench R20, let's maximize that. R20 is running. It's doing really good. It's going through fairly quickly. R20 is getting us to 100% of uh, EDC, 96% of TDC. It's hitting everything on CPU power. Temps are lower. I'm very fairly surprised by that. 68 degrees instead of 75 the CPU Z is benching was hitting. So, and the core clock 3.9 instead of 4.1 at a peak core voltage of 1.23, lower voltage. So CB20 is hitting a lower voltage than CPU Z's own little benchmarking program. Why is that? It was different on the 3600. 3600. Um, I don't remember. I think on the 3600, CB20 was uh, hitting it a lot harder. Maybe it's because we have more cores, right? I don't know. That number's a little low, 4325. If you look here, I, I ran a previous run, and it was at 4650, 4647 uh, without OBS running in the background. So OBS, the, the screen capture program, sucking down 350-plus points, something like that. Um, but anybody else kind of perturbed, weirded out with 1.5 volts at stock? Seems awful high to me. And at all core, it's at Christ. What's it hitting? 1.2, whatever. 
1.35 um, bone stock. So that's a fair amount of uh, amperage and volts that are going through here. All right, so now I've just done a quick run into the BIOS and did a little playing around uh, and turned on uh, AMD overclocking PBO. So if you look here, the CCXs have a single core max frequency of 4.6 gigahertz now. So I, I did the plus 200 megahertz. So 4.6 is what it will go to on its own. And so if we run something like uh, CPU-Z's um, bench program here, we can see, and it's kind of crazy, it's still 1.4 volts max. If we go here and we stress the CPU, we can see that the max clock that we're seeing, all core, isn't any higher than it was uh, without the PBO or overclocking turned on. It's close to 4.1 uh, using CPU-Z's stressing program. Uh, there are some things that are a little bit different. The max temp is still the same because, you know, it's the max core clock we're seeing. Max voltage, 1.3 volts, is about what we're seeing. It's about the same voltage we're seeing here uh, in this situation here with uh, with using, using CPU-Z's program to stress it. So now if we turn it off, we do a run of Cinebench R20. We'll see that with R20 and the cores all stressed, it's still about the same, 1.1. Five and 3.9 gigahertz. So running PBO is probably going to have a good effect on gaming if your single core performance goes up because you're at uh, 4.6 gigahertz for peak, but uh, not necessarily for all core workloads like running something like R20 to do rendering or video rendering or anything like that. So we'll leave it at that and uh, we'll start doing uh, some more overclocking here as we go along to try and see what's the best most we can get out of this 3700x very interesting results thank you for watching